Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, I want to talk a little bit about why we need to stop talking about leveling our beds and start tramming our machines. So a little bit you might be asking, Joe, what is tramming? You know, I'm used to this level thing. My wife tells me to go level a shelf. I take a level, I put it on the shelf, and I say, look it, hon, it's level, right? Well, that's not the same with a 3D printer's bed or any machine tool bed for that matter because what is tramming is I'll put it up in the corner it's the act of creating a parallel interface between the plane of your table of your work surface and that of your machine tool head for a vertical mill now if you really think about it what we have here is really a vertical mill just in the inverse so because instead of uh, having a spinning tool that's removing material from some surface object mounted to our bed we're adding material so this is an additive vertical milling machine from that perspective so therefore having a level perspective between the bed and the machine tool head is very important because one of the pieces that I want to point out and I picked the creality for this is I have a uh, single Z axis here and you notice I have this one two three block placed underneath here this one doesn't fit why is that? Because since there's no z-axis here, it sags just a little bit. So if I lift up on this guy just a little bit, I can get it to slip in there. It's about uh, 0.1, maybe 0.15 millimeters sag here. Now, why does this work? Why do I get good prints off of this? Because the bed here is sagged or de-leveled to that same amount. So I've matched my plane of this bed to the plane of my machine tool. So it is actually going to be higher on this end and you can sort of see this on the level because if I pick this end up you see the level actually move up this way. So this machine is that this bed is not level and if it was level I would get poor prints. And really where the genesis of this video came from is for the JG Aurora community a couple weeks ago I did a video about how to use their intelligent bed leveling uh, and I've got a number of hate emails for that and I was rather surprised or, or messages I should say and, and one in particular accused me of gross misconduct of Geometry 101 because three points define a plane and it just really left me scratching my head and that's why I decided to do this video is to kind of share why we do some of the things we do in 3D printing so uh, because it goes a little bit past just rote geometry because the viewer was correct three points do imply a plane and what I have here is an example so if I take these three points so I have A1, B1, and C1 alright you'll probably get a reasonable level but what's going to happen back here I mean we're still not getting a true level to our um, machine tool access because again we have both pitch and yaw of this machine tool because again I've demonstrated here how there's a sag but I also if I look at it I also have a forward sag in my machine tool this way also because of the way these wheels work so I have both a pitch and yaw in kind of aviation terms I'm a drone flyer um, in both directions of the bed and so this is what's important to understand and that's why what we're doing when we level the four points and then do the center is we're taking the averages of the air and we're distributing them because the thing is if I come back and I say alright instead of taking these three points what if I just take these three points what kind of prints do you think I'm going to get this is where just sort of saying rote academic geometry really doesn't apply because what I do is I have a complex surface here in this bed it's sort of like think of it as the dichotomy paradox or Zeno's paradox where to get to the end of the bed you gotta go halfway and to do get halfway you have to go halfway this is where the problem arises we have a we have a multitude of planes here as we're printing and we have an irregular surface because as I showed in the video where I created this and I showed how to tram quote unquote tram a bed you'll see that this this bed is not uniform across so the idea is to distribute the air however talking about these three points a lot of you can say Joe what about auto bed leveling? auto bed leveling does not level your bed what auto bed leveling does is actually trams the two surfaces together in software so what happens is because we're measuring from the tool head as a reference point to this surface what it's doing is taking the difference now in my da Vinci's it takes three points sort of like the viewer mentioned so point A B and C and 
all that is good for though is determining the air in the slope. So number one, I still have to have a fairly well trammed bed. The only thing that the auto leveling or auto tramming is doing is further adjusting or refining my, my physical tram, if you will. The second piece is there are other bed levelings which have the touch sensor which take many points of the bed. Now that's far better because what's happening is that's doing just as I have demonstrated here with the tape. It's actually breaking the planes down into subplanes and measuring the different zones, if you will, and then taking it or subtracting it from the G-code as the G-codes run through there to uh, adapt plane A to the tool head plane B. So that's how auto tramming works and that's really the proper name for it. Not leveling because nothing ever gets leveled here because what I can do is I can take this, I can put two bricks underneath here, tip it like this, and is it going to print? Yes. Is my level level? No, my bed is not level. But it is still parallel to my tool head. It is still trammed from the bed to the tool head. And that's what's the important part of this. Now, again, a lot of folks, you know, again, they wrote me, oh, measuring the center is stupid. Reality is you typically have a bow in the center. Because, again, if you go back to the um, JG Aurora video, I actually have, actually have to do it twice because the thing is, even because the JG Aurora has a glass bed, there's a bow in it. So if I distribute the air in these four points across the bed, my head hits the bed here. So I actually have to bring down all four equally. So I have to distribute my error across all these points equally and average it out. Because as I go through here, if I set this to say a 0.2 millimeter layer height, I may have 0.3 some places, 0.8 others. It's not going to be perfect. This is where I'm going to do a future video that kind of breaks down how I get the perfect first layer. I've, you know, after doing thousands of prints, I have it down to a science and I've never done a video on it. So watch for that coming pretty soon. But again, I think this is important because I think a lot of sp uh, folks, especially new folks coming into the hobby slash industry, um, have misconceptions when we say, oh, go level your bed. Because again, your wife tells you to go level it, you grab a level and, oh, hey, it's level, why am I not getting good prints? And then as we go along, we sort of make the rationalization, oh, we have to match it to the head, and we have to do the paper level and that kind of stuff. And then it starts to make maybe not more sense, but we have sort of an implied, you know, um, muscle memory type thing. So you do this, it works, but why does it work? because we're tramming the two surfaces. So hopefully I didn't ramble too much in this, but I did want to share a lot of good information because I get a lot of questions about this and I wanted to get a good video out there on the difference between bed leveling and tramming and why we need to start tramming. So hopefully you found this interesting. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Make sure you check out the swag shop over here. Hit me up in the comments below with your thoughts and we'll see you guys all in the next video. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel.